And the most important thing you can remember from imaginary numbers, other than what they are, is that anytime you see an i squared, that's equal by definition to be negative 1. So we're going to see that as we solve these problems here. What if I give you and tell you that some quadratic have the following roots? i times the square root of 5 is root number 1, and root number 2 is negative i times the square root of 5. And I say, these are the roots. I want you to tell me what the quadratic function is, or what a quadratic function is, that has integral coefficients. That's the other thing, that when you want whole number coefficients uh, that have these roots. Well, from the theorem that we've already learned, you need to find two things. You need to know what the sum of these roots are, and you also need to figure out what the product of those roots are. So for the sum, it's just i times the square root of 5 plus negative i times the square root of 5. And you can see right away that that's just 0. All right, so there's not much there. But then to multiply them together is a little more involved. When you multiply r1 times r2, you're going to have i times the square root of 5. Let's wrap it in parentheses. Negative i times the square root of 5. Now here's how we have to be careful with imaginary numbers. Uh, they're not hard, it's just you have to be careful. The way I want you to do it is like this. This is going to be the following. i times i, don't do it too fast in your head. The negative sign kind of comes along for the ride, but the i times i is i squared. Don't tell me what i squared is yet, just write down that i times i is i squared. Then when you multiply the radicals, it's going to be the square root of 25, because when you multiply the radicals, you can multiply what's under them. Right, then what you're going to have is the negative sign from here, but this i squared is by definition equal to negative 1. Then you're going to have times 5, because the 5 is what the square root of 25 is. Then what you're going to find out is that negative times negative is positive, you're going to get a 5. So r1 times r2 is just equal to a positive 5. So it's very important. Most students, when they start multiplying imaginary numbers together, do things so quickly. They say, well, this is going to multiply. It's going to be a negative 1. Then you're going to miss a sign somewhere. So carry this sign down. Write that this is i squared. Next step, substitute for negative 1. Then you cannot go wrong. All right, so to figure out what this quadratic is, you just follow the theorem that we know. It's going to be x squared minus r1 plus r2 times x uh, plus r1 r2 uh, is equal to 0. And then we just plug in what we found. So we have x squared minus the sum of these guys ended up being 0. So I'm going to put 0x. And then the product ended up being 5. And so x squared plus 5, because the minus 0 goes away, makes it go away, is equal to 0. So x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. Now think about it. Does this make sense? If I were to figure out what the roots of this was, how would I do it? I'd move the 5 to the other side, so I'd have negative 5. I would take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of that negative 5, the answer is going to be plus or minus, and then the square root of the negative means an i comes out. Square root of 5 is going to be still under the radical, so it's going to be plus or minus i times the square root of 5, which is exactly what you started with. So it makes sense that this quadratic is what you get. You can't always check them so easily, but this one's so easy I wanted to point it out to you. So that was a uh, situation when we have purely imaginary roots. Now what if you had a situation where we had some complex roots? Remember, complex means you have real plus imaginary parts. So we have one root that's 3 plus i, and the other root is 3 minus i. And we want to figure out what uh, an equation is or with integral coefficients that has those roots. So we're going to add r1 plus r2. We're going to find the sum of the roots first. So it'll be 3 plus i plus this guy, which is 3 minus i. And you can see the i and the minus i is going to go away. So all you have is 3 plus 3 is 6. So it's going to be r1 plus r2 uh, is equal to 6. Right? And then the next thing you have to figure out is what is r1 times r2? Now for this, you have to be careful because it's 3 plus i as a term multiplied by the other root, 3 minus i, which is its own term, and you have to do FOIL on this. So what you have is 3 times 3 is 9. This gives you 3i when you multiply it. This gives you negative 3i. And this gives you negative because negative times uh, positive, so it gives you negative, but i times i is i squared. Don't start substituting in too early for what i squared is. You do that in the next step. So you have 9. This goes to 0. This minus sign comes from here. i squared is negative 1. That's what you do. And then you have 9 plus 1. And so what you get is 10. And so you say that r1, r2 is just simply 10. So we now know what the product of the um, roots are, along with the sum of the roots. And now you just stick it into what we already know, which is the, the equation, or a equation, is going to be x squared minus the sum of these roots, r1 plus r2 times x, 
plus r1 r2 equals zero. We just stick in what we know. The sum of the roots came out to be six, so it's going to be six x. The product of the roots came out to be 10. And so you have x squared minus six x plus 10 is equal to zero. If you were to plot this, or then you would find out that there's no real crossings of this above the, uh, uh, because it's hovering above the x-axis, so there's no real crossing points. But if you were to run this through the quadratic formula, you would figure out that the two answers you get are three plus i and three minus i. All right, again, wanted to give you some examples with roots that were imaginary and complex. So first problem we did had imaginary roots. The second problem we did had complex roots. This last problem that we're going to do is also going to have complex roots, but with radicals thrown in. So you have to deal with radicals as well. Uh, and so for this one, the two roots in question are the following. 5 plus i times the square root of 2, so that's one of the roots, and 5 minus i times the square root of 2. That's the other root. You can see they're conjugates of one another, and they each have this radical part of it, so we have to deal with that. And so we have to find the sum and the product of these roots. So r1 plus r2, the sum, is 5 plus i root 2. We're going to add to that this guy, 5 minus i root 2. Now the i root 2 and the negative i root 2 are going to basically add to 0. So all you really have left over is 5 plus 5 is 10. Notice that's a common theme. When you have these conjugate, you always have imaginary numbers in conjugate pairs. So the imaginary part, when you add them together, always goes away. But when you have r1 times r2, you have to be more careful because you have to multiply this first root, 5 plus i root 2, times the second root, 5 minus i root 2. And so you have to do FOIL for that binomial there. 5 times 5 is 25. This gives you 5 times i root 2. So I'm going to call it 5i root 2. There's not much else you can do there. Then I have 5 times the negative, so the negative will be here, but it's still 5i times root 2. And then the last term, you got to be careful, negative times positive means they have a negative sign. i times i means you have i squared. Don't do any substitutions yet. And then square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Let's just leave it like this for now not to not do too many things at once. Because we all know that that's going to simplify down later as well. So here we have 25. This term minus this term is going to go to 0. Then I'm going to have a minus sign from here, but I also know that i squared is negative 1. And then I knew that square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4 because I can multiply what's under. And so I'm going to have 25 plus square root of 4 is 2. And so I'm going to have 27. And so r1 times r2 is just the number 27. So when you have the numbers, everything's very simple. So you have x squared minus r1 plus r2 times x uh, plus r1 r2 uh, equals 0. Now that we have everything in place, the sum of the roots came out to be 10, 10x. The product of the roots uh, came out to be the 27, 0. Let me under make sure I have it right. x squared minus 10x plus 27 equals 0. So you can see these problems are not any harder than anything else. It's just that they involved either imaginary or complex roots or radicals in the roots. And so you're just drawing on skills that you've learned in the past. How do you handle it when you multiply radicals together? We had to do that here. How do you handle it when you have complex numbers multiplied? You have to do FOIL. How do you handle it when you have imaginary number squared, you know, and all of those things? So we're getting practice along the way. And once we have those skills in place, then the problem becomes not so hard. So make sure you can do every one of these problems. We have only one more lesson in this topic of finding the quadratic equations when we're given the roots. So I want you to follow me on to that lesson to wrap up this topic after you've proved to yourself that you can do these problems right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.